Welcome to St. Andrew's United Church in Edmonton, Alberta for Sunday, December the 6th. This is the second Sunday of the season of Advent, uh, the Sunday in which we light the candle of peace, and some of the children in our children's program will be doing that candle lighting uh, with us this morning. So if you have your Advent candles ready to be lit, you can light them along with our children. As is our custom in the season of Advent and the season of Lent, we begin with a call to worship by our cantor, Bereket Habtum, who chants the call to worship in his liturgical uh, language of uh, Tigrayan, which is the liturgical language of the Ethiopian Coptic Church. The call to worship comes from the book of Luke. It is Gabriel's salute to Mary. Hail, favored one, and blessed are you amongst women. We're glad that you're here to share this time with us. We hope you find it an engaging and a transformative one. Let's Last Sunday, we lit the first Advent candle, the candle of hope. We light it again, remembering the hope which will always be brought to birth in, through, and among all creation. First candle is lit. The second Advent candle is the candle of peace. In the silence of our worship here, we light it. Watching it burn and glow, second candle is lit. And we affirm that we are people of God, willing to walk and live in partnership with all who seek to be people of peace. Let us again remember that without hope and peace, people struggle to find their way. Let us remember those whose lives are a beacon of peace in the shadow of turmoil. Let us pray. We pray, God of time and of eternity, help us appreciate the significance of these moments together, that they may open our eyes to the blessings of the past and to the promise of the future. Grant us courage for today and for tomorrow. Blessed be you. Amen.
that bring us good tidings. Get thee up to the heights and sing. Proclaim to a desolate people the coming of their King. Like the flowers of the field they perish, like grass our works decay. Our first reading from scripture today is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah from chapter 40 verses 1 to 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of God. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of our God shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of our God has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of God blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, Herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the God comes with might, and God's arm rules. God will feed the flock like a shepherd. God will gather the lambs in God's arms and carry them in God's bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make God's path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. 
Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Like many people, I suppose, I've picked up some new television watching habits in this time of pandemic. And one of my favorite reality TV shows has become Highway Through Hell. And if you've never heard of it or don't know it, it's the story of a small group of uh, towers and wreckers who uh, are based out of Hope, BC and who patrol the Coquihalla Highway that runs through the interior of BC. And uh, it's the story of uh, their work on the highway as they go out uh, in snow and rain and sleet and uh, pull wrecks off the highway, uh, pull cars and tractor trailers out of huge crevices and ravines, all with an eye on keeping the highway open and the traffic flowing. And I think one of the reasons why I like watching it uh, is because they like their work so much and they get such a great sense of satisfaction out of the jobs that they do. And also, uh, that when they're done, they're done. Um, there's a great sense of accomplishment when one of those big semis that has gone off the road is uh, back on the road and safely going down the hill with uh, sometimes thousands of cars behind it. The Gospel of Matthew begins with a reference to a highway as well. Um, not a highway here, but uh, a mythical highway or a metaphorical highway that is going to need to be built before the reign of God can, be, can come to fruition. And it's uh, quite a building project because every valley will have to be filled, every mountain will have to be lowered, all the crooked places will need to be made straight. And uh, you can imagine that there will be a great sense of accomplishment when all that is done as well. And what Mark is doing is taking those words from the prophet Isaiah, who was prophesying a time of return and restoration of the community of people that had been wrenched from their homeland, uh, carried off into exile, and who were going to be returning to the place that they knew. It wasn't going to be the same as it was. Uh, there was no longing for the good old days. It was going to be quite different. Uh, but they were going to be home again. And one of the images and the metaphors then that Mark picks up when he is talking uh, about the Christ, who is Jesus as he understands him, is that sense of restoration, of, of coming home, uh, and building a home in uh, which all can participate fully and freely. Um, one of the beautiful things about these stories from Scripture is that they have a particularity about them. Uh, John the Baptizer really was a uh, first century Palestinian messianic person who lived in the Galilee and who baptized. 
but nevertheless, uh, with all that particularity, one thing he has in common with many of the uh, seers uh, of his time and of other times is that he is not the important one, but the message that he proclaims is one that is available and can be seized on by anybody. And that message of homecoming and that message of peace, uh, even though it comes from the mouth of a uh, first century Palestinian Jew, is one that's universal. Uh, it's one that uh, is part of the longing, I think, uh, of everybody's psyche or soul. And the hope that the promises that there will come a time of restoration, of homecoming, of peace, um, is one that everybody shares. And so while that message is proclaimed by John the Baptizer in first century Galilee, uh, it could just as easily be proclaimed by another John the Baptizer in the hills off the Coquihalla Highway in the interior of BC. Because the hope that that message engenders and the longing for that sense of peace that the message proclaims is one that is part of every person in every time and in every place. The American poet Maya Angelou picked up that theme. Uh, she wrote a poem about 15 years ago now for the uh, lighting of the Christmas tree uh, in Washington, D.C. And uh, she set her poem in what seems to be a small town, could be in New England, could be in the Midwest, um, could be almost anywhere, could be in the Saguenay region of Quebec or in the foothills of the prairie. But her message of peace uh, is that universal theme that is part of our Christmas story, but points us past our particular celebration of Christmas to the universal yearning for peace and our commitment to work for it by building those highways of communication in which all can be heard and people talk with each other and communicate with each other rather than talk past each other. Here is Maya Angelou and Amazing Peace. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our house. Floodwaters await in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves. What have we done to affront nature? We interrogate and worry God. Are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? And into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Blood waters recede in memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. 
hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate, which crouches breeding in shadowed corners. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first, it is too soft, and then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for, not just the absence of war, but true peace, a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We Baptist and Buddhist united and Muslim say, "Come, peace." Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Jainist, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to come and stay a while with us, so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and to see community. It is Christmas time, a time of halting hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Christ, into the great wisdoms of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. And we, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak a word aloud. Peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at each other and then into ourselves. And say without shyness, or apology, or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul.
and our minds and our imagination. You know the prayers that we pray for peace, the longing that we have for a sense of security, an end to conflict, a time in which neighbor will be neighbor to us and not stranger or foe. And in all our yearnings and all our imaginings, we know that we are held in a web of care and compassion that is spun from your very being, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the peacemakers, those who are willing to intervene in situations of struggle and strife, those who are willing to negotiate and those who are willing to sit at tables across from those who were once their foes to forge common futures. We remember those for whom peace is service, and those who are on the front lines of feeding the hungry, those who care for the refugees, those who provide medical service, and care for all those who are sick. We remember especially in our prayers this day the people of the Eritrea and their struggles. We remember the people in the Sudan as stretched as they are, they accommodate even more. We remember those who seek to make this season a festive one as best they can, and those for whom this will be a difficult time. We remember in our prayers those with whom we are connected in thoughts and emotion and prayer, but whom we will not see physically this year. And we ask that those bonds would remain strong and be strengthened by this time of separation. We remember all those for whom this is a difficult season and those who feel an anxiety as the sun departs. We remember those who are anxious about what tomorrow will bring and those who cannot leave yesterday behind them. We remember those who are struggling for daily bread and those who are in need of shelter. And in this season when we remember the blessings that are ours to share, we ask that 
we would keep them open, sharing with others as we are able, and proclaiming that message of homecoming and peace through our words and through our actions. And now, O God, we offer you the silent prayers of our hearts and of our minds. love and to go in peace. The world is waiting. And whatever you do, do it for love in the name of Jesus, who is our Prince of Peace. And now may the grace of Jesus the Christ, the love of God and the communion, and the compassion of the Holy Spirit be among us this day and forever. Amen. <laughs>